We're three episodes into Who's Only Murders in the Building, and a lot has happened. We've got secret elevators, ball forward paintings, a new board president who's got plenty of motive, and of course, a sad look at the last day of Bunny Folger. Don't forget we have a Who's Only Murders in the Building official merch giveaway. I just got this in today. I'll explain how you can enter in at the end of the video. Now I decided to go back through all the trailers, the teasers, and the official trailer to see if I could find any more clues or glean any tidbits of information from things that we have seen so far using the information that we know already from the first three episodes. And I'm telling you, there's a couple little things that I've been able to find out here that I totally missed, but let's get into the trailers. This first shot is of the knife going into the ceiling, and I believe this is Lucy entering into Charles' apartment for the first time. What I noticed, and I don't think I've seen anyone mention, is that the red blood and the blue handle mirrors the outfit that Charles is wearing in the same frame. Now, I was against any of the podcasters being the killer, and it's usually one of the biggest rules in murder mysteries that the killer can't be the person looking for the killer. But Bunny's dying words were 14 and savage, and I don't think we can take anything out of the possibilities. What do you guys think about that? I think it was definitely intentional. Do you think that they're trying to tell us that Charles was actually the killer? Just as I'm recording this, Only Murders in the Building has been renewed for a third season. That means more clues, more murders, and a lot more to figure out. I hope you guys are here with me along for the ride in between the season. Of course, I'll be doing some videos on what I think is going on to the next season. Hopefully by the end of this season, some of my theories will be right. But anyways, let's get back into what I learned from looking back at the trailers. Subscriber Gloria had mentioned the number 14 might have something to do with Mabel's mural. And I originally thought it only had 13 spaces, but again, I was wrong. 14 windows and 14 people. Teddy and Theo are in one and Winnie is in another. In the original trailer breakdown, I mentioned that Dr. Grover Stanley's face is obscured by Mabel's and he is the 14th person. I don't know if this is any type of confirmation, but 14 means something, and this sounds like a solid way for Bun Bun to name her a killer. And I do feel that it was very intentional that Dr. Grover Stanley's face was obscured by Mabel's and the mural as to keep him off of our minds. But what do you guys think? Do you think there's some correlation to the last person in the mural and the number 14? Well, what does 14 mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? In episode three, when the podcasters denied Bunny access to Mabel's room to celebrate with them, we heard a door slam when the podcasters opened the door and you saw it was from across the hall. Now, in the previous video or a couple videos back, I mentioned that I thought it was the same person from season one, episode one. I've seen a lot of people say that they think that it is Mark. I believe his name is Mark the Musician, but I don't think that's him. Take a look at these pictures here of what Mark looks like. Mark has facial hair, and the person we saw go into this room in season one did not. Granted, Mark could have grown out his facial hair, but this person looks different and quite a bit smaller, if you ask me. I still believe that it's the same person who was out when the podcast was being arrested at the end of season one. Let me know what you guys think. Do you still think that it is the musician guy? That leads us to Ivan, Bunny's waiter friend, who some think may be this dead body that we see in the trailer, but I don't think it is. Putting them next to each other, there are some clear differences in the faces and complexion and things like that. But I do think it's the same person wielding the knife heading into Charles' apartment and later into Mabel's apartment. We see the trio running from someone here and then later someone finding them in the walls of the Arconia. Now I think these shots of the podcasters running away from someone is this person's apartment. I believe they started in Mabel's apartment through a secret passageway, went through the walls into this man's room. He found them. They run back out into the passageways, back into Mabel's room, and this is where he dies. And you're like, Dallas. How do you know he's in Mabel's apartment when he dies? What makes you think that? Well, look closer, look closer. And you can see 
The carpet in the room is the same carpet that Mabel laid down to cover up Bunny's blood. Now, even more interesting, the super fans are here. Tony Award winner Ali Stroker and host of Wanna Kill a Question, that's her wheelchair. Her character of Paulette and likely the others are here with the podcasters, hopefully helping them with the mystery. Or could they have been a part of what happened? It's impossible to know, but we got to keep our eyes open. There were lots of other moments from the trailer that I really couldn't get anything from. And hopefully within the next few episodes, we get a little bit more of what was going on. If you want to be entered in to win $50 of Only Murders in the Building official merchandise, all you got to do is like the video, be a subscriber, and comment something. Maybe tell me which one of these things you like the most, what you thought was most interesting, or if there's something that you've noticed that I didn't pick up. At the end of the season, a lucky winner will be chosen at random. Those were all the details I was able to find from looking at the trailers. Again, please let me know if there's something that I missed. Either way, thank you very much for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll see you guys on the rooftop.